Okay, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for the time that we have to study here. Um, we invite your presence. And we need, Lord, your direction. I pray that you can help me to concentrate, even though I'm tired. And um, we pray, Lord, that this study will be a blessing to each person. Help us to understand our history, the time that we are in. And please guide and direct the topic of study. Bring to our mind the remembrance of these things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, what we're looking at here today is, and, and you can see on the chart, this is uh, one of my diagrams, which I made in October uh, during the camp meeting. Uh, it was, I basically made this diagram, I think, on October. It would have been the 20th. So that was the Sabbath. I'd got an email on Friday night, and this is what I had produced. So this was, um, or was this, yeah, this this one was produced um, for Sabbath. If I remember correctly, everything that happened, I'm not sure if I remember everything, um, how everything came about. But I'm going to try to go through this. Now, what we have done in looking at these prophetic periods of the past, these were the things that gave us an understanding of what was happening to us in the present. Now, I have here, back in 2016, we came to understand there was a relationship between the 391 years of the period of the kings, which is connected to the prophecy of Ezekiel, and the 391 years of Revelation 9, 9 verse 15. That's the 391 years. In this case, it's 15 days, which is half of a month. We're 391 years is 391 years and a half of a year. But it was this, the prophecy of Josiah that Ezekiel uses that connect us, connected us to Josiah Litch and tied these 391 years together. Now, of course, if you look at this structure here, you'll see that there's 120 years of the king's of Israel when it's a United Kingdom, that is Saul, David, and Solomon, and then 391.5 years for the kings of Judah themselves. So there is a structure here or a relationship between two different periods, a period of 120 years and 391, and also with the two first two woes, a period of 150 years and 391. So these structures uh, are things from past prophecy. Now, to bring these things into the present, it wasn't something that was decided to do. It's something that came about um, in God's providence. Now, I, I just want to go back a little bit, even to understand some of the things that we had come to understand and how they led to the November 9th and the July 18th prediction and the date that's coming up, December 25th, how we came to understand these things. Now, from my perspective, because I was studying independently of what FFA was doing, that is, I wasn't, I had one ear to the ground and one eye on the screen, so to speak, following a little bit what FFA was doing, but from the time I came into the movement, I was much more interested in the past understanding of the movement than what was presently unfolding. It is, I wasn't, I was trying to under, I was trying to catch up. And in doing so, I was, you know, going through things like the 2520, trying to work out the chronology. I was trying to understand, um, was this movement of God or not? 
And as I was doing that, I kept finding things. And, and as I was finding things, I watching what the movement was doing, I was realizing that we were studying the same things from a different perspective. That is, because I was studying chronology, uh, you know, especially chronology of the Babylonian captivity, uh, you know, in 2014, 2015, and the movement was studying things like the decrees and Esther, but from a different perspective, they're looking at the uh, in 2014, um, 2015, they started to look at the seven thunders and the, the, the first seven kings of, of Persia and the last seven kings of, of, of Judah and, and things like this. So this, this had all been unfolding. And from the time I came into the movement, the, the first thing that I ever presented was line upon line, and that was in in 2012 in 2013 i'd presented the four seven times and um the connection between the book of daniel and leviticus 26 in 2014 i'd presented the basic structure of all the different um prophetic periods so that was part of the start of really that biblical chronology the 666 years and, and the prophetic mirror in, in more detail in 2015, I then came across Josiah Litch's prophecy, and I, I presented on that at the Alberta camp meeting. Um, so that gave me the understanding of the dates that we see with the 391 years, not, not as much detail as we later had, but at least the idea of the 26th day of the fourth month I had understood. In 2000 and 16 this was really bringing together the chronology of the babylonian captivity connecting it to the past this the line of joseph so bringing in joseph into the into the picture much more detailed understanding of ezekiel and of course this is where we see the parallel between josiah lich's prophecy and the prophecy of josiah in the book of ezekiel so we had this profound understanding of the year day principle as it related to the 390 years and the 40, 40 years, which was 390 days and 40 days. So we had found the interpretation, the correct interpretation of Ezekiel 4, of verse 4 to 6, which had eluded um, scholars and, and people who were studying prophecy, had eluded them uh, for centuries. So that understanding of Ezekiel was extremely important uh, for this movement. Now in 2017, lots of things were coming together as the movement was um, understanding the lines, the you know, first day of the first month, fifth day of the fourth month, first day of the fifth month, 10th day of the seventh month. And then we had the prediction before midnight. And we had had this idea of a prediction regarding Islam uh, back in 2014. Um, but now it was developing with this prediction before midnight idea. And at that time, also the, the movement was beginning to organize. And so 2017 becomes a really pivotal year for this movement, as we will see. And then we're going to have Samuel Snow's letters. So Samuel Snow's letters open up in connection with the prediction before midnight. And so when we get to 2018, all of the pieces have been put into place for us to understand our movement. We had the symbols of Raphi and Paneum, which had come in, come on uh, December 17th, 2016, um, when Jeff uh, was at a presentation by Chawatu. So 2016, we had this Raffi and Paneum that was opened up in Alberta, the Paneum part, particularly by Jeff on January 14th, 2017. And, and this all started to create this whole system of chronology coming together, all of these dates for this movement. 
And of course, in 2018, we had then a prediction, November 9th, which we're going to look at, and then July 18th. So this is a lot of information. And I'm going to just go to some of the slides I have here. So one of the first things um, that I will do here, I'll go back to this slide I was showing you. Um, So I'll try to break this down. This isn't maybe the best way to do it, but it's it's the simplest way for me to do it. And I, I do have another slide, which I'll show you as well. But the date there is noon, October 13th, 2018. Now that date, October 13th, is a significant date. It's the date that Babylon fell at midnight in 539 BC. Also noon October 13th is something that Tess had been presenting regarding the miracle of Fatima. So it was a date that was significant in that it, um, it tied together uh, biblical events and modern events and things that Jeff had been talking about in, in, the, in the movement long before uh, August 11th, or before September 11th. So what ended up happening, and I'll just sort of describe it a little bit, and we'll look at the chronology. When Tess began to present, so I ended up going to um, Arkansas in 2018. And we ended up there for a couple of reasons. So. Jeff had come to Alberta in August of 2018. And Heidi and I had been living in a tent all summer. Um, so we didn't we didn't have a place to live and Heidi was looking for work and I could have, I guess, been working at the guitar store, but we weren't sure where we were going to be living. It would be depend depend on where Heidi found work. That was sort of the plan. And um, I had left my job at the guitar store back in 2017. So, so here in 2018, uh, we're at this, we're at this camp meeting in Alberta, and Jeff is there. And Heidi was had done some job interviews, there was some good prospects. And Jeff had mentioned that there was a friend Brian Ransom, who had once again got tongue cancer and that he he needed our help and he knew we were friends of Brian Brian's and that Brian had wanted us to come to Arkansas now for me to end up going to Arkansas there's a lot of personal things involved but one is I didn't have my passport um, back in the early in the summer and by a miracle I had received my passport when based on the laws of Canada I shouldn't have had a passport. So, so I had this passport and Jeff known that that had providentially been returned to me. And so he suggested that we go down to Arkansas uh, in September. And so we considered it and uh, thought that maybe it was the best thing to do. So that's why we ended up in Arkansas in 2018. Now we weren't there particularly um, because everyone wanted us there. Jeff wanted us there. And since there was this, um, uh, in, in 2018, there was a lot of different things happening. They just felt that they could use my services at the school. So, so I would be doing some presentations at the school because they had the School of the Prophet still in 2018. Now, for me to be there, one was odd, but the other thing that was rather interesting, did the color of my screen just change? Uh, it must have been this thing. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, so we there, were there at the School of the Prophets. I started presenting on September 11th was the first presentations that I did. Um, now, what I was presenting 
was um, the studies that I had been working on on the week of Christ. So I was, I was presenting a lot more detail regarding the week of Christ that I had presented at the camp meeting in Alberta in August. And these week of Christ studies led us to make a prediction. That is, we were predicting in 2019 that there was going to be uh, Judas's betrayal. Now, I didn't really have a date for it. I didn't really know what to do, how, how I would take the date from the week of Christ study and apply it to our time. But I had made this prediction, so to speak. Now, I wasn't doing, you know, a prediction which I thought was against time setting. I was using this week of Christ and just said, if this week of Christ can project into the future, then we should see, um, and, and you, I can just show it here. So for those of you that know about the week of Christ study, I'll try to zoom out a bit here. So we had this week of Christ study where we took the literal week of Christ and we had laid it out and we could see that the years on the bottom were the years of the prophetic mirror going in reverse like Hebrew is read and that the days on the top were the literal days from Christ's baptism until uh, the stoning of Stephen and plus it included um, a representation of the 1260 days literally that that gave us this prophetic mirror. So I'm not gonna go into the detail of this, but, um, and, and we did some extensive studies on this. So anybody who's watching this and is not familiar, there are lots of videos on my YouTube page on the week of Christ. So the 70th week. Now you can see that we could take these years and keep going backwards and they would bring us to the years on our calendar. So what we saw is that the 12th day of the first month lined up with April 8th in 27 AD, and that lined up with 2019. Now, the only th event that occurs on in the week of Christ is the on the 12th day of the first month is uh, Judas's betrayal. So we're using the symbol of Judas's betrayal which was April 8th in 27 AD, so not in 31 AD, but in 27 AD. And we lined that up with 2019. And so we could look at, you know, what that might mean. So I have JB there means Judas's betrayal at the bottom, if you're looking at the bottom one. So this caused a bit of a stir. This is before, uh, Tess had presented November 9th, 2019, as the close of probation for, for uh, the priests. Now, Stephen, while I was at, um, at the school, or at the camp meeting in August in Alberta, Jeff's first presentation was about a study that Stephen had done, uh, where he had taken account from the day of Pentecost and and use this by taking out the days of atonement a 359 day year and counted from the day of pentecost to october 22nd 1844 so i'm not going to go into that study at this moment but what that what that had done um, for stephen is it actually had produced the date november 9th that is he had counted 1844 days from October 22nd, 1844 to November 9th, 1849. And so, so he already had had the date November 9th and he also had November 9th, 1989. And he also had the idea of 30 years. So he was taking, he was making a prediction about November 9th based on a completely different, um, prophetic line than what Tess was doing. But for some reason, Stephen's understanding just had gone over the head of Jeff. Jeff didn't really see November 9th. And of course, if he had known about Tess's November 9th, he would have seen Stephen's November 9th, but it just didn't register with him. 
So what Tess is going to do is she's going to present November 9th. Um, I've got to find the chart. I know I have it here somewhere. I'd found it earlier. I have all kinds of diagrams here. I'm going to give you a look at a simpler one. So I don't have her uh, presentation date on here, but it's going to be October 3rd. So on October 3rd, 2018, which is a Wednesday, we're going to have a prayer meeting as we did every Wednesday at the School of the Prophets. And this is going to be um, the last week that Tess is there. She's going to leave on the Monday following. So she's not there on October 13th which is the Sabbath. So Parbinder is there and Jeff, and they're having this discussion regarding what Tess has been presenting and, and what she had presented during the day, um, which had just mostly been hinted at. It wasn't really stated explicitly by her as she had presented two studies. One was called um, um, The Midnight Cry. And the other one was called, um, uh, I'm trying to think what it was, The Midnight Cry, and the other one was, does anybody remember what the names of those two studies were that she did on October 3rd? I think it was called 10 Days. 10 days. That's it. Yes. Um, it was called 10 years, not 10 days, 10 years. Okay. So there was 10 years and the midnight cry. Now, the significance of that, of course, is really important because October 3rd is 10 days before October 13th. And so we have a day for a year. And what we had come to understand at that time is that October 13th was the midnight cry. Now, what you see here is uh, the first thing that we want to look at is this 126 days. So on July 27th, 2018, Daniel from Brazil, um, he had made a prediction and he wrote it down um, and, and took a picture on his phone of this prediction. And he had been at the camp meeting uh, that was in, in Italy. And, and that camp meeting was pretty important. Now, he was counting 126 days from June 10th. So June 10th was a date that Parminder had presented that we can do time setting. This is, um, and he'd made these arguments. And Jeff, even though Jeff, just like myself, has always been opposed to time setting, Jeff understood the arguments and accepted that this movement had time attached to it and that we were going to be setting a date. So, so uh, Daniel counted this ordinal count of 126 days to October 13th, and he used uh, the prophecy of Revelation chapter 10 with one foot on the sea, one foot on the land. And um, and so this idea that he had is that the truth was going to be proclaimed first in Europe and then in the United States. So that the United States being the wilderness, Europe being the sea. Now, on, at this week of, uh, uh, at this uh, prayer meeting, midweek prayer meeting on Wednesday, on October 3rd, so after Tess had presented this November 9th date, um, the topic that Jeff and Parminder were, were dealing with, so they were having this meeting in the classroom uh, beforehand, and it, and it sort of, people just started coming into the class meeting, classroom, and Parminder and Jeff were still discussing this. Now, what they were concerned about, what Jeff was mostly concerned about, was the liberal views of Tess and this issue regarding CNN. So it wasn't so much about November 9th that they were discussing. It was about um, how the movement was going to look at her suggestion that we 
need to that the that the stream of truth is CNN and not Fox, right? So there was this sort of idea that there was a pure stream and a corrupted stream and CNN was the pure stream. So this was pretty crazy ideas, pretty radical for this movement to accept. And, and Jeff was having a hard time with this. Now, we ended up deciding to pray. We had a prayer meeting, but it wasn't, of course, it was, it just went on a discussion that Jeff and Parminder were having. Now, during this prayer meeting, this is when Daniel from Brazil talked about this prediction that he had made, the 126 days, and that October 13th, the not the, the Sabbath coming up, but the one after, was the fulfillment of this 126 days, but that he believed that either Tess or Parminder would be presenting on that date at Lambert Church, and that would be the date then that um, the midnight cry would occur. But he was going to be presenting on that Sabbath, and he was expressing his disappointment that the prediction, the date had already been given on October 3rd, 10 days before the date he predicted. Now, what we came to recognize as he was predicting, so at noon on October 13th, I'm in Lambert Church. And Daniel's going to be presenting this time setting idea. Now, he's going to be, he doesn't really talk about November 9th so much as he talks about uh, the fact that we're time setting. Now, they're, they're recording his presentations. He actually does two of them. Uh, but they don't release them right away. And, and it, it, it's, so anyway, I'm there at noon and I'm doing this calculation. So I'm thinking about this November 9th prediction of Tess's. Now I'm a little bit skeptical about Tess, probably like everyone is, but there are some things that she was doing that was quite remarkable. There was other things, of course, that I knew I didn't agree with. One is I knew she was a socialist, but that, you know, that wasn't really a huge issue for me. It was more the methods that she was using to produce this date, November 9th. Now, one of the things that I'd come to understand regarding time setting, because Jeff had talked about this in August of 2018, I had taken the position that if we were going to set a date it was going to be something that the movement did, that it wasn't going to be the result of a single individual, and that it was going to be obvious to everyone that it was true. That is, there wouldn't be a divided camp over the issue, that we would just all see it. And, you know, at this point, I'm not accepting November 9th yet. But when I do this calculation, what I notice is that it's 391 and a half days from noon, October 13th, to midnight, November 9th. And you can see I have a biblical date under there, the 11th day, the eighth month. It depends, of course, which calendar you're using. And back then, I was you know, figuring out this calendar on my own. But, but anyway, I counted this 391 and a half days. And to me, that was quite profound. But I, I didn't like the 126 days going back to June 9th. Instead, I counted 120 days because the 120 days of the kings of, of Judah, that is Saul, David, and Solomon, precede the 391, uh, 120 years, precede the 391 and a half years of the kings of Judah in the divided kingdom. Now, looking back at that date, I could see it's the second day of the fourth month. Now, I can't remember which calendar I was using there. Um, but that date ends up being June 15th. It's not going to be the June 10th date that was being used by Daniel. But when I counted the 126 days, I wanted to see that as well. I counted it back to June 9th. And what I didn't have on October 13th is I didn't have this other date, June 2nd, 2017. So I'm going to 
explain a bit about that and what that means. But anyway, we have 10 days after Tess presents 10 years and the midnight cry. We have a date, October 13th, that marks 391 and a half days to November 9th. This, of course, became very profound. It meant that we were we were using the structures that we had uncovered in the past, long before we had any notion about setting a date, and that these structures fit. But they're going to fit in a way that's even more remarkable, as, as you will see. And you can sort of see this a little bit here. Um, but I'm going to go back to one of these other diagrams. So if anybody has any questions, I mean, feel free to ask them. Now, this is what I ended up presenting on the Sabbath. So I, the camp meeting started on, um, so the 13th was the Sabbath. And I'm just going to try to remember, I want to make sure I get these dates right. So this is October. So October 13th is the Sabbath. And the camp meeting is going to begin on the 16th. So it's on the Sabbath when we're driving. Um, we're driving home from church. I'm trying to think how that happened. We came back from church and I was commenting about this calculation. And I'm not sure how that exactly worked out, but anyway, we were commenting about this calculation. So um, Parminder had overheard this, and I began working on this, this 391.5. And the next morning, Sunday, I did a presentation on um, this calculation. And, and I believe that presentation is on my YouTube page now. So on the 14th, I'd made this. Now, it already scheduled to speak um, during the camp meeting. I, I believe I speak on the 16th the first time. It could be the 17th. I can't remember. I think it's the 16th. So I'd already had my notes for the camp meeting. Uh, but I was presenting this, and normally Parminder doesn't listen to what I'm talking about. He'll sit in the class, but he works on his computer. But this time, he was listening to what I was presenting. I think the the... It's called Some Calculations is the title of the, uh, the study. And he suggests that I get some more time to present at camp meeting so I could present this. And what I was presenting was basically an affirmation of Tess's um, November 9th. Now, of course, he, he must have regretted that later because he never accepted it. And I'm pretty sure it's just that Tess didn't accept it because she said she never did when I talked to her about it. She said, I don't I don't accept your 391 and a half days. But anyway, from the 14th and the 15th and even into the 16th, uh, I spent all my time writing. So I wrote new notes in an addendum and I presented then these 391.5 days. Now, what ended up happening on the Sabbath, which was the 20th of October, um, well, actually, it happened Friday night. I had an email sent to me, um, and this email had this from uh, the School of the Prophets, June 3rd, 2017. So I don't know if you can see that. I'm just trying to get this a bit more. And it talks about... Um, what happened on June 2nd, 2017. So this is going back even further. And, 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 and I'll, I'll show you what, what, what ends up happening, what our understanding uh, ends up about. So I, I already had understood, um, I'd understood about Jeff at the camp meeting, but I never understood about the 9-11 prayer. That is, Nobody had presented that to me. So on, on, in 2017, on June 2nd, it says, Jeff's sermon was on the significance of the glory of 9-11 of to us as priests and the judgment of the living, which started from 9-11. It went exactly, for exactly 120 minutes. Now, there's 
a dispute. It was probably actually an hour and 20 minutes, not 120 minutes uh, that this presentation went on. Um, now, 120, what is that a symbol of? He says there, what's that? The 120 days from the first day of the first month. To the first to day of the midnight cry. Yeah, to the midnight cry. Of... Yeah, so he has here 9-11 to midnight, but he, he must mean the midnight cry. Um, so that's the 120 days, and that represents uh, the priests, where the 70 days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month represent uh, the 70 or the Levites. So the 12 represents the disciples or 120. Now we also know that on the day of Pentecost, there's 120 people. So it also has the symbol of Pentecost as well. So it says, and when it concluded and Jeff knelt down to pray, the time was, believe it or not, exactly 9-11 p.m., which was exactly when the sacred hours of the Sabbath started. And uh, the proof here is over on this side. And that is, they were in Torre Palisi uh, in Italy, and the sun set at 9-11 p.m. on June 2nd. So he's going to be opening the Sabbath at 9-11 p.m. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is June 2nd is also Pentecost. So it's the sixth day of the third month. So we can see that there's this 120 minutes or one hour and 20 minutes, which would still be the same symbol. And also the fact that it's Pentecost that's ending. Now, so I prepare this and Parminder is going to allow me to present during one of his studies. So I, I've already done my studies, uh, my four presentations. And Parminder, though, is, is going to have me go up. And I, I think it's a 10 or 15 minute presentation that I do regarding this, these two 9-11 prayers. And I say two because uh, the one that happened on June 9th, 2018, is, was also a 9-11 prayer. And that was closing the Sabbath. So he's going to have a prayer in 2017 in Italy. And, and a year later, well, it's a year and seven days later, he's again going to have a prayer. Um, but this time it's going to close the Sabbath. So they're both closing prayers, but one uh, opens the Sabbath, the other one closes the Sabbath. And so I only found that out once I got to uh, to the meeting that there was this other date. So I didn't even know about it when I did my presentations. I didn't know that it was. Uh, so I, I, I actually went to the computer and added this in. So I'm pretty sure these are the actual notes I had at the time. So this was quite quite amazing. That is, we had these two 9-11 prayers. And so as we started to look at this, we started to see that there was this structure. Now, the interesting thing about it was this 126 days, which we're going to look at, and the 120 days. So I went back to 120 days. And, and the date I came up with was June 15th. Now, nothing happened on June 15th. But what I did have for June 15th was a symbol, the second day of the fourth month on the rabbinic calendar. But also, if I looked at June 15th, Julian, um, it was 391 and a half days from June 2nd, uh, 2017. So it gave me another period of 391 and a half days. So I had now two periods of this. Um, now, of course, nothing happens on June 15th, 2018, Julian, right? That's just going to be June 28th. So I don't know of anything happening on that date, but it's still part of this symbol or part of this structure. Now, in 
This whole structure here, though, becomes very, very interesting. So we, we start to see this structure, but at that time, we don't fully understand it. So one of the things that we don't really have is, is the complete structure here, what this means and what it's connected to. We have the October 3rd to October 13th, um, which is, is giving us th that this is a symbol of the midnight cry 10 days after Tess presents, November 9th. And so now we have this date, November 9th, and it's midnight, commencing November 9th, because it's from noon, October 13th, 2018. And you can see it says 11th day of the eighth month or 11th day of the ninth month. It could be either, depending on how, what calendar you're using. So you have this 120 minutes or one hour and 20 minutes. You have Pentecost. You have these 391 and a half days. It ties you into this symbol. It ties in the symbol of the 120 days, which I used, and the 126 days. Now, we're not counting from June 10th. We're counting from sunset on uh, June 9th. Now, of course, if you count ordinally from June 10th to October 13th or cardinally from June 9th, you're still going to end up on October 13th. Right? So whether you count June 10th, 126 days to October 13th. And that's just because if you're counting ordinally, you're not going to have a zero. You're going to start as June 10th is one. And the same thing when you start counting cardinally from June 9th, June 10th would be the one. So this was something that Daniel and I, he had a hard time understanding what I was doing. And I tried to explain it to him, you know, how to count. Um, that it's, it's not as simple as people always make it out to be. There's lots of different ways to count periods of time. We have that same issue with Christ three days, the third day, or after three days, um, all meaning the same period of time. Now, any questions on this just before we move away from this? I mean, I know there's going to be people out there watching this who are not going to have a good understanding of this. But for me personally, just to be there on October 13th, doing this calculation and then finding this structure, it was definitely one of the most profound things I'd ever personally experienced. And, and I knew that we were passing over the ground of fulfilled prophecy and that God was unfolding something to this movement that we needed to see. And so when it came to the whole idea of time setting, I was still not really a time setter in the common uh, understanding of that word, and I'm still not. That is, I know we can't predict the second coming of Christ. And all of this time or these dates that have been given to this movement were unfolding as we were passing through them and are part of our experience. That is, they're a witness of God's leading and direction, but they're not meant for us to predict the future to know exactly when events, prophetic events are going to occur. These are something as a witness for this movement. And my idea of time setting was very different than what Parminder and Tess were doing. The reasons that Parminder used to time set, um, one is he was using a dispensational argument that Ellen White's rules regarding time setting don't apply because she's from a different dispensation. And this is a way of ridding us of Ellen White's pesky, and I'm using his sort of characterization of it from in me sort of mocking it. But when you have Ellen White, when you have to apply, use her statements to define what is true, and you have your own ideas, Ellen White's pesky in that sense. It was, it was something that would hinder Parminder's agenda. But Ellen White is given to keep us on track. That is, we can't dismiss a statement of hers because it doesn't agree with our sentiments or our agenda. And, and to me, it's very, very clear that all of inspiration, including the spirit of prophecy, is necessary to keep us on the straight and narrow prophetically. 
And so I've always accepted her statements as regarding time setting. But I understand that we weren't transgressing her counsel. We weren't disregarding it. At least I wasn't in how I did time setting. I knew that time setting was a typical witness for this movement. And, and that's why it was difficult when it came to making predictions in the future of what those might mean, whether it's the prediction of November 9th or of July 18th. That to me, I was not, I was pretty reticent about making a firm prediction about what was going to happen. The thing that I did know is that all of the evidence pointed to what we were predicting as a movement and that we had a responsibility to warn the people in Nashville, even if it didn't happen. And that we couldn't worry about what it might look like if it didn't happen. And I had lots of evidence that it might not happen, but that wouldn't be enough evidence not to warn the people of Nashville. <clears throat> so as we began to look at these things, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the whiteboard and see if I can reproduce this. And, and I'm moving pretty slowly through this. I want people to understand it because this is what we're going to be doing this week. We're going, to, we're going to fully understand how this movement was involved in these predictions. So some of us are quite familiar with this. Some of us may have, we remember that we did these things, but we wouldn't remember the dates. Um, and we might not remember a lot of the details and, and these evidences. So I'm going to switch to to the whiteboard. And so. I'll have to erase all this here. So here's what we were looking at. We were looking at this idea that we have October 13th, 2018, and we have November 9th, 2019. This is noon, and this is midnight. And this is 391.5 days. And I'd already well established the 391 and a half years of the chronologies of the kings of Judah in connection with the prophecy of Ezekiel, four verse four or chapter four verse four to six. Now we then had, and so I'm I'm leaving out this earlier part. I'm going to look particularly at this period of time here. We're going to have June 9th, and of course this is still 2018. And we have six days uh, to June 15th. And then what we have is we have a prediction that's made. And this is going to be made on July 27th by Daniel. So you have Daniel's prediction. And his prediction is going to be this 126 days just counted differently. Now, we didn't notice this, of course, at first. So we, we knew we had this. So I'm going to have my 120 days, my preference. Daniel's 126. But I'm going to recognize that both are valid. And especially once we find the 9-11 prayer here, uh, that's going to nail this down, that this is, is valid. <clears throat> now, I'm trying to remember how I did it specifically. But I'm going to just draw the line. So I did a presentation. It was uh, evening vespers, if I remember correctly. And I was looking at um, I was looking at the prophecy of Ezekiel, and somehow, and so 
I don't remember all the details, but I had come to understand, understood, I understood from the book of Ezekiel that we had this date, July 18th. So I'd come and up, came up with the date, July 18th. Now, July 18th up here, this is going to be 252 days after November 9th. And July 18th, the way that I arrived at it initially was um, using Josiah Litch's prophecy. So we had Ezekiel's prophecy. But Ezekiel's prophecy is connected to Josiah Litch's prophecy. And so I used Josiah Litch's prophecy to arrive at July 18th. And trying to remember exactly what we did. But I think what I did was this. I drew July 18th under November 9th. Now this July 18th, this might have just been... Um, yeah, this might have been just from Ezekiel's prophecy. I'm trying to remember how I did this. I believe this came from Ezekiel dealing with um, the 10th day of the fifth month and um, finding that date. Because I found the 10th day of the fifth month. I'm trying to remember which I found first. I don't remember. I should remember these things. But anyway, this is July 18th. And it's just a Julian date, okay? So we're gonna do this as a Julian date. And then I'm gonna, because this is from Ezekiel's prophecy, that's why it's a Julian date. And I'm gonna count backwards. So if I do this and I count 391 and a half days, I come to this date, June 22nd. So what have I just seen here? What's June 22nd? I know his, his third letter. Yeah, so it's his third, his third letter, the Pentecost letter, right? Second letter is the Passover one. This is his third one, the Pentecost letter. So I'm going to have, uh, you know, his Pentecost. Now, if I go back to his first letter, February 16th, this is going to be 126 days. So I'll just draw it down here. And then it's going to be published six days later on February 22, right? And then it's going to be republished on April 3rd. Now, one thing we'll start to see is that these dates line up um, either ordinal or cardinal counts. So it's, it's a little bit tricky in this way. Now, the center date here, if we go 63 days, what date is this? So we get, create a chiasm of 126 days, we divide it. What's the center date? August 11th. Yeah, so here you have August 11th. And I think actually I'm doing this wrong. I don't know if I put the April 3rd here. Um, okay, the center date here between February 16th and June 22nd. Yeah, so that I'm just going to put the... Uh, this is going to be April 3rd, April 3rd here. So April 3rd is going to line up with July 27th. August 11th is going to line up with what date in Millerite history? What's the center? May, May 2? No, May 2 is going to be the center of the chiasm that goes from February 16th to July 18th. This is going to be April 19th, right? So April 19th becomes the center of this chiasm, 63 days and 63 days. And then uh, we have August 11th 
So um, I'm trying to remember how I do this here. So April 19th, we're going to have 12 days later here, or 13 days later, you're going to have August 11th, Julian. And this is going to line up with uh, I think I'm doing this right. I'll have to look to make sure I'm doing it. So what would 13 days be after April 19th? That would be May 2nd, right? Yeah. So May 2nd lines up with August 11th, Julian. So what we have here is we have Samuel Snow's letters, the writing of his first letter, its first publication, its second publication, the April 19th date, the May 2nd date and the Pentecost date occurring in this period of 126 days. Now, of course, how long is July 18th after June 22nd? In 1844. If you're going to count from June 22nd to July 18th, how many days would it be? Like, is it 26? Yeah, like 26 days. But if you add 26 days to 365, what will you get? 391. 391, right? So what I have here is this is one year plus 26 days, OK? 26 and a half days, if you want to be more exact, because this is beginning, you know, at midnight, this would be noon if you count 391 and a half days. But what we saw here is that we had Samuel Snow's letters. But Samuel Snow's letters were part of the structure that we had already just experienced. So this to me was, this was an affirmation that this July 18th date has a connection to November 9th. So when Jeff saw this, because he understood Snow's letters, he had been presenting them in 2018. He saw right away that this July 18th date was valid. But this was just a Julian date. Um, and we didn't really have this 252 because this would be July 31st. That is, July 31st is the 10th day of the fifth month in 2020, right? The next key was then, uh, I believe that Stephen helped by looking at Josiah Lich's prophecy and also producing July 18th, but it was going to be the Gregorian date of July 18th. Correct, Stephen? And that you took that half year and counted 180 years? So 391.5, you took the half a year as being 180 days. And then you tried to work that into August 11th, is what I remember. Correct? Yeah, I think I, my initial calculation was wrong. Yeah, it was wrong. We, we okay. fine-tuned it. You looked at the, the right. biblical dates and lined up with the biblical dates. Yeah, and, and see, so you weren't using the biblical date. You weren't using the 26th day of the fourth month. You were just trying to count from August 11th, 180 years. Um, but I was, using, I was using the biblical date, the 26th day of the fourth month, so then I recognized that July 18th, Gregorian, which is the date that we get from Josiah Litch's prophecy. So that's that repeated date in Josiah Litch's prophecy that the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar is July 27th, 1299. And the Gregorian date of July 27th is the 26th day of the fourth month in 1449. It also happens to be July 18th, Julian. 
So it gives us July 18th and 1449 as well. And then we have the divisions of that, right? So we have that 26th day of the fourth month repeating, connecting with July 27th, Julian or Gregorian. But then we could also go to 2020 and we already had July 18th, Julian connected with the 10th day of the fifth month. So now all we had is this final step to give us July 18th, Gregorian. And that date then was connected to the 26th day of the fourth month. So, so if we put over here, July 18th, um, so remember this is not, it doesn't mean that they're not the same there. So July 18, 2020 was connected to the 26th day, day of the fourth month. And that's because the 26th day of the fourth month and the 10th day of the fifth month are 13 days apart just like the Ju Julian and Gregorian calendar uh, since 1900. In Millerite history, they're 12 days apart. So, so there just became this overwhelming evidence that what we had experienced in our movement was connected to time. Now, the problem, of course, was this prediction of Tess's. And she predicted a bunch of things based upon all these November 9th. And I don't think she was wrong in, in understanding the symbols that were being used, that these were symbols that we could take these other November 9th and see something about November 9th. But the problem was to make the predictions that she did. Now, the thing is, we basically did the same mistake. But again, we weren't wrong. The mistake of Parminder and Tess was rejecting this witness. They needed to recognize this witness here of November 9th, and also the connection between Josiah Lich's prophecy and Ezekiel's prophecy. Now, the profound thing here, of course, is that Daniel from Brazil is making this prediction on July 27th without any recognition, or at least, I mean, he knows it's July 27th, 1299. You know, he knows about that, but he's not thinking about that. He's not thinking about Josiah Lich's prophecy or Ezekiel's prophecy or anything like that when he makes this 126 day prediction. He's using the 126 days as a symbol that we get from Daniel chapter five. And it's also one tenth of 1260. But the fact that the center date is August 11th and that we can take the Julian date and line it up with these dates from Samuel Snow's letters shows that this movement was being led by God in what it was doing in the past. So all of the things that we studied in the past, and these are primarily things that I had noticed. So for me personally, it was extremely powerful to be here on October 13th because there's not many other people who would have had the skills and the knowledge about this to actually do that count. I mean, Stephen might have been able to do it because um, he knew about the 391 and a half days. He knew about a lot of these things as well. Plus, he had already predicted November 9th using a different method. But for me to be here personally was, was very, very profound. Now, this structure here of this 63 days and this 63 days, this becomes important as this movement moves on, as it moves on past November 9th, and as it approaches July 18th. That is, all of the things that happened in the past, all of the things that we were experience, experiencing, they began to unfold to this movement. And the movement, um, there was the two groups. We had the Omega. The Omega rejected all of this. Not all of them at first, but once Tess and Parminder had set themselves up as prophets, then even people who had been involved in this and knew about the solidness of these things that we had studied, and even some who had even presented these things, uh, you know, since since the camp meeting. So in November, we had some of the students presenting all of these things, the 391.5. Once Parminder and Tess said they're no longer truth, then they had to abandon them. 
It didn't matter what they personally had experienced or thought. Parmenter and Tess were then the prophets, and so their word superseded any evidences that God had given. And then they had to attribute this to Satan. So they'd have to say, all of this stuff that happened in the movement was of satanic origin. It was man, Satan working through man, to give us these witnesses. Now, I haven't seen any evidence that Satan has anything to do with this. But later on, a group of within our movement they came to have the same argument that Parminder and Tess had. That is, we're using numbers in ways that we can't. So we're going to look at this, at what's going to unfold from this. So this week is going to basically be looking at how this unfolds to this movement. And, and it's a difficult presentation to do in the sense that there's a lot of information I do have this in other papers, so I'm probably going to send these papers. Um, well, probably I will, but not saying exactly when I'll get to it, but I'll, I'll start to gather these papers together um, that we can look at, that you can personally study. Now, just for the people who are here right now, is, does this make sense? Do some people not fully understand this in the past? Does this simplify it for people? Because I've tried to just focus on this. Is anybody having trouble understanding it? Anybody have questions? Anybody not familiar with this before? So everybody who's here is pretty familiar with these dates and what happened in 2018? Somewhat, I just need to review it over and over because of my thick head. Okay. And, and this then has been helpful. What's that, Rosanna? Um, from... What he got there. Um, from June, you got J January 9th. June 9th. June 9th to October 13th, 2018. So this is Jeff's camp meeting prayer, uh, closing the Sabbath. It's basically closing the camp meeting. The next day, they're going to have some organizational meetings, if I understand correctly. And then June 15th. June 15th, that's going to be me counting 120 days backwards. Nothing happens on this date, but it becomes part of the structure because the 120 years of Saul, David, and Solomon is followed by 391 and a half years of the kings of Judah. And so when I put this date- Oh, back, so your 63 is going back to June 9th. To June 9th to August 11th. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Because that's 126 days. And we have the same thing here. Now, if you count it out for day for day, you're going to recognize that there's some ordinal cardinal adjustments in here. But it's not, it's not exactly, you can't take each of these days and exactly line them up. Um, I believe this is an ordinal count, if I remember correctly. So that move some of these things into ordinal or cardinal, but that was what, what Daniel was doing. And we get that ordinal cardinal counting from other lines of prophecy. So sometimes you're going to start at one and count. Sometimes you're going to start at zero and count because the Bible will often do that. And we often do that too, depending on what we're counting. But but the fact is we can take all of Samuel Snow's letters and line them up symbolically with these dates here. So we don't have anything on August 11th in 2018 that we're marking other than the symbolic division of this 126 days. And then we don't have anything happening 13 days later other than the symbolic August 11th of the Julian calendar. But we've already done that in, in Josiah Litch's prophecy where we stagger a date 
Julian and Gregorian and something is significant on one day, nothing happens on the other, but as a symbol, it exists. Now, the other thing, of course, remember, this is Pentecost. Uh, back at the beginning, June 2nd, so when you have this first one that leads up to June 15th, Julian, 391 and a half days. We have that symbol of Pentecost, which is the sixth day of the third month, and this is a symbol of the sixth day of the third month. So, so these divisions are important. And then, of course, Samuel Snow's letters with April 19th now as the center. Remember, this is the false Passover uh, publication of his first letter. And this is his second letter published on the true Passover. April 19th lies in between these two dates. And so April 9th is also the center of this chiasm. So remember, Samuel Snow had a chiasm where May 2nd was the center from February 16th to Ju July 18th. But now we have another chiasm that exists in Samuel Snow's letters. But that one gives us this 391.5 to the symbol of July 18th. And I'd already shown that July 18th in Samuel Snow's letters was a symbol of the prediction before midnight. So this prediction that we were making regarding July 18th was the prediction before midnight. And so even back in 2017, on September 23rd, when I'm at Lambert Church presenting the symbol of the prediction before midnight, that 777 days before November 9th, 2019. So, so God has tied all of these things together. We're going to look at the whole structure eventually. But in 2018, this is the structure we see. We see this, this structure connected to November 9th, but also connected to July 18th, because this structure is the structure of Samuel Snow's letters. And it gives us the same structure. The, the, the probability that you could do this, that you would have these connections that we already made long before, that they would unfold in this movement in this way with these symbols is just astronomically impossible to have occurred by chance. And so the question is, is this Satan deceiving us in some way? Or is this God showing his fingerprint? And since it comes from the prophecies of the Old Testament, things that we already know to be true, and that these, these structures already have occurred in the past, and they have occurred in Millerite history, and that we have prophecies like Josiah Lich's prophecy, Ezekiel's prophecy, that this movement has come to understand in detail, and that they somehow connect with our predictions. It seems to me impossible to reject them without rejecting all of Scripture. We know that those on December 6th and even the group that separated up from us November 9th, the Omega, that that's what they had to do. In order to reject these dates, you have to reject Scripture. You have to reject the spirit of prophecy. And of course, some people will only go so far back. They'll try to go back to where they were before, before this movement. But that becomes intellectual suicide. And mostly what they do is they just go back to the world. Or, and if they don't go back to the world, they go back to a type of nominal Adventism. And even if they stay in some kind of, you know, position that sort of tries to retain the fact that they're sort of reformers believing the present truth, they're going to be rejecting, they're not going to have a foundation to stand on. So they rejected the foundation. So it can't be long. They're definitely not going to have the faith to be able to withstand any kind of test of that faith of what they believe in, because it's, it's so shallow. So so again, we're, this is what we're going to be doing this week. It's, it's a lot of work, you know, for you uh, to go through this. So just to kind of review this really quickly, 
going to go back to my slides. So we got a few minutes. And um, so if I go back. So I'm just going to flip through some of these slides that I had been making at the time. You can see Josiah Litch's prophecy, 150 years, the 391 years and 15 days. And um, Ezekiel's prophecy of the prediction of Jerusalem, you can see the 391 years and the 40 years. And there's a lot of profundity, profundity in this, how I came to understand some particular points uh, regarding this. So you can see the 350 years from November 2nd, 15th day of the eighth month in 977, the prophecy of Josiah with Jeroboam offering on the altar, and then in 627, in the, um, the 13th year of Josiah, you're going to have this 40 years begin when the prophecy of Josiah is fulfilled. And the 391 and a half years is just this extra 18 months from the siege to the uh, the walls of Jerusalem being broken down. <clears throat> so this is, I wonder what this is. So this is another thing. We're not going to look at that one. That'll just confuse you. Um, and then again here, there's the June 2nd, the Pentecost prayer at 9 11 p.m. 2017 and the 120 minutes and then the Sabbath begins at 9 11 p.m. so um, so obviously this would be 7 11 p.m. if it was an hour and uh, 120 minutes and this is going to go to June 15th Julian not to the Gregorian date but to the Julian date and then I can take that June 15 Gregorian date and count 120 days from there to October 13th. So you can see August 11th in the center there again. This is just the same same picture, a um, little bit different, a little bit more detail. June 2nd, you got the two different 9-11 prayers. And um, again, all of these symbols. Now, of course, one of the things which which we have talked about is um, what Stephen did. He took the 180 years, six months, so he took a half a year and converted it into uh, a day for a year prophecy. So a half a year is six months. That's 180 years. And, and again, he tried to go from August 11th. That would bring us to August 11th, 2020. I can't remember why he what he was doing particularly. Um, but if we go from these biblical dates, the 26th day of the fourth month, and count 187 years from July 27th, 1840, 180 years will bring us to July 18th, 2020, which also is the 26th day of the fourth month on the Gregorian calendar. So July 18th, you can see here, Julian is the 26th day of the fourth month in 1449, which July 27th is the Gregorian date. So July 27th and July 28th are tied up together, but it's the biblical date of the 26th day of the fourth month that ties them together. So you can see this year, there's a July 27th and a July 28th that are the 26th day of the fourth month, but here now they're going to be divided by 180 years. So it becomes, uh, you know, quite an interesting how these prophecies worked together to produce our prediction. And this was the, um, uh, it was Ezekiel's literal 390 days and 40 days that I used to come to this understanding of the 10th day of the fifth month. So this was, and it was funny too, uh, because there was, it was uh, Brittany's family that was really having a hard time understanding that Ezekiel lay on his side for 390 days and then for 40 days, and that we weren't looking for a period of three, uh, 430 years, because they said, well, if he's lying on his left side for 390 days, and then his 40, side, 40 days on his right side, 
that's going to be 430 days. And they were just having a really hard time understanding how I could count them both backwards. <coughs> that is, they thought the 390 days should start at the siege or 390 days. 390 years would end at the siege and then 40 years should follow. But since he's flipping over and he's looking at the siege in Ezekiel, he's, he makes a mock-up of the city of Jerusalem and puts all the siege engines around it, then he would be looking in opposite directions. And both of those would be looking towards the center point, which is August 15th. The 10th day, well, the 10th day of the fifth month is August 14th. That's the end of the 390 days. And the 40 days begin on August 15th. So this, of course, he begins his prophesying on July 21st, which is the fifth day of the fourth month. And that's a symbol of midnight. And August 15th is the midnight cry. And as we know, there's 25 days between July 21st and August 15th. That's a symbol that Jeff had noted. But if you add a year in between, so we have the precedent of taking these two symbols and dividing them by a year, we can see from July 21st to August 15th is 390 days. Um, and then we have Ezekiel's vision on the 10th day of the fifth month. That's his third vision, which is four years uh, before the, this should be August 17th, 10th day of the fifth. It's August 17th in 586 BC that the temple is destroyed, but it's the 10th day of the fifth month. And it's July 18th on the rabbinic calendar, the 10th day of the fifth month. In uh, 586, it's a month earlier. Now, so, and then we got these, the temple is destroyed on the 10th day of the fifth month in 70 AD. So I use Ezekiel's first to come to July 18th as a symbol, that is the 10th day of the fifth month being July 18th. And then we, you, we line it up with Samuel Snow's letters and then we get Josiah Litch's prophecy telling us the same thing, witnessing to that. So, so any questions? I know I... Um, Looking at all these different things, I have lots of different diagrams where I explain even more detail. They get pretty busy. Um, but here's the one where I take Snow's letters. There you can see them. All Snow's letters, February 16th, February 22nd, April 3rd, April 19th, May 2nd, June 22nd, the 391 and a half days to July 18th. And then seeing them lined up with our structure, um, all these dates lining up with what's above. So pretty profound. Okay, so I'll, I'll send, I'll try to get the paper sent out today. We got Dwight presenting this afternoon, um, his continuing study on the book of Malachi. And that's going to be at um, 1.30 Mountain Standard Time. And so we're going to have a lot of things that, that are happening in this week, uh, these studies. And then, of course, uh, December 24th and December 25th, we'll have extra meetings. So any final comments? Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the things you teach us and thankful for this study. We sometimes forget the things that have happened in the past. We forget some of the details. I know I don't remember every detail of how things unfolded. But Lord, we know that we need to know the past. The past is the key to the present. And we know that you have been leading this movement in a very powerful way. 
So we ask that we can follow wherever you lead. Be with each person. Bless them today. Bless Dwight's study this afternoon. And um, we ask, Lord, that uh, you can help us to continue to study and understand these things for ourselves. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.